Imagine a super powerful computer that could break Bitcoin's security in just few seconds. Nah, that's surely not possible. Bitcoin is designed to be resistant to all attacks. Blah blah blah. These are the things every Bitcoiner wants you to believe. Otherwise, they wouldn't make the bank they're planning to. Even Isaac Newton once said, what goes up must come down. Well, maybe he wasn't talking about Bitcoin, but I'm sure he had a point. And now, what if I told you that these supercomputers already exist? They are called quantum computers and their impact will be significant on everything, including cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin itself. But are they really able to destroy Bitcoin's technology? First, let's break down what these quantum computers actually are. In regular computers, everything is based just on two numbers, one and zero. We call these numbers bits, and they are used to represent everything, from numbers to words to pictures. Now onto quantum computers. Here, instead of using bits to represent information, we have something called qubits. Qubits have the same function as normal bits, but with one difference. They don't represent just one number at a time, but both, one and zero simultaneously. To simplify it, think of zero as a horizontal and one as a vertical direction. When a bit is zero, it moves horizontally. When it's one, it moves vertically. But the qubit is both, one and zero at the same time, so it can move wherever it wants, even in 3D space. Pretty amazing, right? Now imagine having four bits. There are 16 different combinations you can create using only ones and zeros. A normal computer can only be in one of these combinations at a time, but a quantum computer can exist in each of them simultaneously. See what I did there? I've just showed you the exponential speed of a quantum computer. Nope, I still don't see it. What is it even good for? Okay, let's break it down to something more practical, like a database searching. If you have 1 million data files and you are searching for a particular one, you typically need to go through all 1 million files at a constant speed to find it. However, with exponential speed, it only takes the square root of that time. That's exactly 1000 times faster than a normal computer. For those who still don't get it, it's f***. Effective. All cool but how can simply fast computers pose a threat to cryptocurrencies? To understand that, you need to know something about data representation on the internet, which includes banking details, emails and cryptocurrency blockchains as well. Everything that is on the internet should be encrypted. Without this encryption, someone could potentially log into your bank account and withdraw all your money. To show you how it all works, let's use journalists as an example. The journalist creates a website and shares the public key with everyone so they can encrypt their messages before sending them. A public key is a technique that encrypts your message into unreadable text. For instance, it can change each character to the next one in the alphabet. But it doesn't work in both directions. With just the public key, you aren't able to decrypt these messages to readable version. To decrypt them, you need a special, private key that only the journalist owns. That's also how all the cryptocurrencies are encrypted. Cryptocurrency holders use private keys to verify that they are the real owners of their cryptocurrency. Transactions are also secured with hashing and other blockchain encryption techniques. But there is one issue. There are algorithms that are able to calculate the correct private key from the public key they receive. However, if a computer with a normal speed were to run that algorithm, it would take hundreds of years to solve even a simple private key. So practically, it's not practical. That's why we aren't worried about breaking Bitcoin encryption with just current computers. However, that doesn't apply to quantum computers with their exponential speed. Researchers at the University of Sussex estimated that the quantum computer with 1.9 billion qubits could essentially crack Bitcoin encryption in just 10 minutes. Oh my god. And with just 13 million qubits, it could do the job in about a day. The only positive thing about this is that current quantum computers have a maximum of 1000 qubits per processor, but this number is constantly rising. Some cryptographers are working on solutions, such as increasing cryptographic key sizes, which is way faster process than developing more powerful quantum computers. This would mean we would be always ahead of them, private keys would be always bigger, and the blockchains would adapt with every upgrade of quantum computers. But the implementation is kind of problematic too. In a typical blockchain like Bitcoin, every node will have to accept this new encryption method. To do that, users will have to sign for approval with their old private key. However, inactive users might never upgrade their private keys, which could lead to the theft of these bitcoins. Additionally, wallets holding 1 million bitcoins, supposedly belonging to Satoshi Nakamoto, may never be updated, leaving them potentially exposed to the operators of the quantum computer. There is a saying that when these bitcoins move, a quantum computer is strong enough to break bitcoin's encryption, at least the one that these wallets use. In the end, everything including cryptocurrencies will upgrade its encryption over time, so you shouldn't be worried. And even if there was a powerful quantum computer created tomorrow, Bitcoin would be the smallest problem you would worry about.